Hello everyone, welcome to the Luke Branquino Show. I was getting coffee and there was an old man in a cowboy hat sitting at the, at the table and he said, you a bareback rider? And I said, yes sir, I am. And he said, you're gonna regret that one day. <laughs> Hey, hit that subscribe button now. You're going to like it. Welcome to the Luke Branquino Show. Uh, this guest is the 1998 PRCA world champion bareback rider, Mark Gomes. Mark, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, Lane Peterson, our good friend Lane Peterson, he said he's a real big podcaster. And he's hit me up on Instagram when I told him I was doing this. And he's like, you know, I was over listening to you and Mark talking about retirement and and everything that goes with it and one i was you know i told him quit eavesdropping on our conversation but two i thank him for it <laughs> because it was something i was thinking about you know our conversation there at uh, fort worth at the wcra event a lot of people don't understand what guys like you and i or anybody that rodeos for as long as we did go through once you're done yeah i agree it's uh and it's 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 hard to whine to someone for uh, accomplishing all your dreams and and having this lifestyle, but uh, but to have it ripped out from under you, you know, overnight is a is a different deal. And and it's it's tough. It's really tough. You know, a lot of guys get to pick when they retire. You know, uh, they have a big finale. They have a thing. I know for like yourself, you really didn't. You got backed into a corner where this is how it turned out. And there is no farewell party. There is no. PM picks up the your your ceremony where we get to roast you or you're going away. You know, it's uh, it's 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 just over. And and welcome to real life. You know, you made a good point, and I and I didn't. I guess for me, it was a little bit different than you because of you know my opportunity with television, podcast, and still being able to be involved in rodeo in some capacity. But like you said, when you got done, you didn't know where you were at. You didn't have a meaning of life really because that's all you did right it was it's an identity if you're you know and and this this does i i realize where it can sound you know cocky or or, or brazen but heck once you you put on the decals once you're the guy that, that you go to and you experience this even more than me and i'm talking about the pinnacle the the top winning a world title um the next year every rodeo you go to you're the guy that they're going to announce during the opening. So you're not out there at the trailer with everybody or you're not behind the shoots. You're 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 getting ready. You're trying you have to keep that in fact in mind that they're going to use you that way. Um when you accomplish a, a goal that you set out that seems impossible and you accomplish it and 15,000 people cheer for you, it's hard not to feel a little bit of pat on the back, you know. And uh, right. unfortunately in everyday life, you don't get those opportunities. Those wins aren't as successful not that they're not as valuable or as important it's just that they're not they're they're not that way you know you don't feed off of them that way well no you don't have the energy of the competition you don't have the energy of the crowd to help get to that pinnacle like you said of that championship and one thing about it like you said you're the guy that they call on that next year to announce in the arena but you're also the guy that has the target on his back and you're also the guy that has to start at the very bottom, just like everybody else that year. Absolutely, absolutely, it's over. So, but but would would you agree with me when I say that when you're one of those elite groups, some of them I know did never even won world titles, but they're still that guy that was always in the mix, always in the the media. See, when I started rodeo, and you have to think that was 1994, and you didn't have the technology that we have now. No, no, my rookie year. Um, I, I made it to the national finals in the bareback riding, and I don't know when somebody prior or what, that was kind of unheard of. I really, I won the cow palace at the end of the year and it propelled me in. But no, yeah, back then when we rodeo, you wrote down your things in the book because you were entering through Procom and you had to use a payphone and you had to drive to the next payphone if that payphone didn't work. And you had to stand there and wait and wait because of busy signals and get through. And then you finally get your business done and you can go rodeo, you know, or your flights were different. You had to go buy them. You had to have a travel agent. You had to have someone that was doing these things. And then uh, I would say by like, oh, 97, 
98 when I won the world. So 97, 98, things started to change a little bit. Like I was traveling with a lot with the Et Bowers because they were from out, out of right out of Guyman and I was here in Hutchison so we could meet in Liberal at the, at the uh, airport and we were taking charter planes a lot and doing things different back then but that was even expensive you know you weren't getting to keep a lot of the money you won you were you were spending a lot and uh, I remember qualifying for the first national finals and my uh, I'm in the, the the meeting they send you to right the one that you go to right before the day before or whatever and uh, I believe it was uh, Clay O'Brien and Matt uh, Waterberger, uh, uh, Team Roper. Oh, Matt Tyler. Matt Tyler. They stood up and said that they were going to strike and that we were all behind them. <laughs> and they wanted equal money. And I remember going to the room and thinking, we're not going to have the finals. I finally made it. <laughs> Yeti, it's built for those who value shared time and personal pursuit. Whether it's on the rodeo trail or at the family ranch, dustproof, waterproof, and virtually indestructible. Yeti's Go Box has a removable cargo tray and divider, perfect to use for a camp pantry, ammo can, or tackle box. The pack and stack design holds everything you need so nothing holds you back. Yeti's Go Box comes in three different sizes, the 15, the 30, and the big boy, the 60. It's perfect for rodeo cowboys who want it all. You know, several years later, we stood up and there was, um, gosh, it was the steer wrestlers because we wanted to wear, uh, we had somebody pass away, one of our buddies, and we wanted to wear a little, just a little sticker, you know, just in remembrance for him. And we all stood up because they told us we couldn't wear the sticker we all stood up and said hey we are coming to agreements on this this is our rodeo this is what we qualified to get to and we had the meeting stood up they said nobody's going to compete and when 15 steer wrestlers stand up everybody's like we're going to do what they, they want to do uh anyway that was the last year they had that meeting because they got tired of cowboys realizing hey we could stand up and speak for ourselves i didn't know that yeah they don't have that meeting anymore because of that i mean obviously what you guys or what they did then kind of got everybody rallied together and then what we were going to do to get everybody rallied together. What what happened in that uh, meeting at that time was was equal money for the team ropers and the barrel racers. And then we also included, I don't remember what the percentage was, but a, for example, a 4% or 7% increase in prize money every year. And it really didn't start to matter in 1994 until like the year that I won the world. That's when the national finals really had changed in payout enough that if you won the average, you probably won the world. That's the thing with rodeo is everybody gets so fragmented. I know you've seen it and I've seen it. You know, there's seven events, eight events, you know, whatever. And it's all fragmented. If we could come together as one unit and kind of say, listen, this is the best way we can try to do this. And, you know, we can talk about the ERA, we won't, but that's what we were trying to do with that. And I do feel like that helped to make some changes, but you know, the thing about the, some of the people at the top, it's just that ego and the control. They just want to control everything underneath them. Yeah, and I don't know the answer to get away from that, but I know that when, you're, you're correct in that, uh, for instance, when uh, when that strike took place, I remember Clay O'Brien Cooper standing up and saying, this might not be our best boat, but this is a vessel going in the direction that we want to go. We can always change boats. And, and, and it inspired me to think that, okay, he's right. You know, we need to get better. And I'm fine, I, if we're not where we need to be, I want to see a cowboy that, that, that had a career like mine that doesn't have to go work afterwards. He's worrying about how to invest this money, you know, like a regular professional sport. And, and I know we won't be completely like a regular sport because we have our animal welfare issues. You know, that there's no way around that, but I, I'm with you hundred percent. And that is from my understanding, the Teton Ridge's goal and take the WCRA that's their goal let these cowboys win enough money where when they're done they don't have to worry about like you and I going to get a job and figuring out okay what is our identity now since we're not in the arena competing yeah and when it comes to that animal welfare I don't know any city type people that take care of, of stock horses bulls cows anything that love them as much as I mean you know they eat before I do that it's it's a I, I don't understand that one but I, I mean I do That'll be tough, but I think we still deserve, if, if there's a class that can sell us on TV and can sell us, you know, you know, publicly, then that, that wasn't happening when I rodeoed, you know, not till 
the late 2000s or early 2000s i should say you know the late 90s it, it really i was one of the first guys to wear a, a sponsor shirt you know uh, it just wasn't something people did prca wanted their hand on it and i got the perfect one for that so i can't remember what year it was 2004 six around there um, I, you know, everybody started getting sponsor patches on shirt, and I can remember, like you said, you being one of them. Was the last year you were at the finals, 2003? Correct. Yeah, so I mean, I was two years into it and, and got to compete in the same arena as you, but you didn't see a lot of sponsor patches on guys, and let, then that goes down a couple years later, and I get a hat sponsor, or a, a sponsor sticker for my hat with Bowtech Archery. Simple little sticker, that big. They came to me and say, you cannot wear that, and I said, show me in the rule book where I cannot wear a hat sticker on my hat well it just it doesn't look right we don't want you guys looking like nascar i'm like well that's funny because nascar is kicking ass making a shit ton of money <laughs> but you don't want us to do that uh anyway so what it boiled down to is they said well you have to wear a prca sticker on the other side of the hat and i i fought it i said no i i don't there's no rule so they did their special approval rule deal which they're really good at doing and and all aaron ingot was the one that did it and and uh Anyway, I don't need to go into anything about that guy, but, um, <laughs> you know, just, just the, the BS, the bullshit they try to pull on a guy when you're out just trying to make a living and make some money. They wanted their hand in it. They wanted their little piece of the pie. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think we as, uh, we as cowboys, we signed on to that. You know, that's the sad thing about it. it. It doesn't make it any more right. No, for sure. But what is your take on the future of the sport? I mean, you're still involved with, you know, everything from high school to you know judging professionally i i tell you what when uh, when i hear that a bareback rider can win a million dollars at, at one rodeo i'm excited about the future i don't think that's the cap there's an opportunity for people to win you know a lot of money coming up and i i'm excited for that you know you take the, the wcra and you know i can't talk enough about how they have helped propel rodeo, you know, partnering with the PBR and getting different uh, venues and, and different locations, which it only benefits rodeo as far as I'm concerned. And then, uh, you know, the added money the Cowboys could win. It's huge. And then the, uh, Teton Ridge coming in, there's a lot of doubt and, and uh, I don't know, negativity is not the word, but uh, suspect about Teton. I think you know as well as anybody, Cowboys sometimes don't – you know, accept change very well, even if it's going to benefit them. Correct. Correct. I, it, I think that's hard for all the old cap. You know, there's still old PRCA people and I have nothing against PRCA. I, I work for them, you know, uh, subcontract through the judging system, but it, uh, I think that they're, they're afraid of anything new. And the concept with the WCRA is less rodeos, more money. If you ever did it for a living, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's exactly right. And you know, and again, the PRCA is where I made my living, so you know I feel I feel bad. At, and I guess I'm just criticizing them because I'm hoping they'll change for the better. I mean, obviously there's nothing that could change that'll benefit my career, but maybe my kids' career or their kids' careers, you know. Uh, and I think change is inevitable, and change is also good if you got the right people kind of in charge and know knowing which way and which direction to take it. And I feel like, fingers crossed, Tom Glaus is potentially that guy that has a bigger vision and wanting to expand our sport and not just relying on membership to, to drive the association. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. I think we have some really good people in place right now and, and we'll see how it goes. You know, that I, those are responsibilities and things truly for me, Luke, that are above my head and my pay grade. I, I Cowboys weren't always, you know, I wasn't the smartest at business. I, I rode bareback horses really good though. You did rode bareback horses really good. I remember watching you as a kid and then getting competed with you. Who is, I mean, obviously Casey Field and those kids coming up, um, but I mean, Rocker Steiner, what, what's your take on, on Rocker? Phenomenal. I mean, he, truly phenomenal. Um, first of all, his age, he's just a young kid. I mean, when, when, when I was his age, I was still trying to figure out how to battle it out in high school and college. And, and I wasn't doing very good. You know, he's competing with the best of the best. And that that's that's remarkable. Um, I think there's a couple things that he could work on to make his ride go from a 22, 22 and a half to a 23, 24. Um, but you're nitpicking hairs and that's coming from a bareback rider. You know, he, he's he's phenomenal. 
Um, it, it's his his future is his to develop that kid. Um, I don't know that, the, in my opinion, as an old bareback rider, that there should be another world title that goes to anybody other than Casey Fields for a little while if he keeps riding the way that he does. He's amazing. 93 points at Fort Worth uh, just the other day. It, you know, that's... I don't know if that was enough. You know, it was it was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter as long as he won first. But yeah, he he's he's... He's 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 at a place where I remember being as an athlete when you're when you're doing something where he's doing mind muscle memory, and he's already rode that horse probably 50 times, maybe a hundred in his mind before he actually nodded his head to do it. Then he just had to relax and stay out of the way and let his let his body knew what he already knew how to do. And and when you're at that place, it's a great place to to ride at, you know. Um, your your win percentages are like look at let me ask you wh what do you think like if you went to 10 rodeos on the average how many were you probably going to win money at oh when i was in my prime all 10 of them in my head when i showed up i was going to win uh you know obviously the draw could have something to do with that but i'd say in my mind all 10 but i was going to win money at nine of them guaranteed yep yep so so probably 85 percent, right yep yep yeah, so bareback riding was a lot that way, especially even I could increase my win percentage due to the fact that I knew not to go on one that there was just no point. And that's that's the thing that the rough stock riders get, which maybe some of the fans don't know. You guys get callbacks a week or two before the rodeo, and you say, hey, this horse is a piece of junk. I'm going to turn out that, that stock. Sure. If, if you look at it more like fighting, for instance, and they're going to they're gonna class the fights that's who wins first. The best fight wins first. The second best fight. And you know that you're going to a place where there's some already good matched up fights because you know the other contestants and you know their quality. And you know that your partner just isn't going to be quality enough to, to make this fight place. Then sometimes it's not worth fighting in the bareback riding. Well, and why get on? Why sore yourself up getting on that, that one that's not so that, good? That's just it. That's just it. A win, a win without money at some point is just getting sore. <laughs> exactly right. That's exactly right. Where, uh, where you got next? What are you judging? I just did. I just did a little rodeo, Park City, uh, Kansas, here in, in by Wichita, and I'll go to Grand Island, Nebraska next for a one day, two perf, one day deal, uh, PRCA rodeo, and then I suppose it'll be um, Corpus Christi for the WCRA. Oh my gosh, so you just, you got some time off after that, because that's not till, when's Corpus, May? May. I got you. It's just feeding cows and taking care of stuff at home then? Yeah, trying, buddy. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's got cold around here, it got really cold. I think for the next 10 days, we don't give above 23, and that's w without the wind chill. It's going to get really cold, um, trying to feed cows. I got, I started a new venture with Scott Davis from the WCRA. Uh, we're raising a few bucking horses, got them to take care of. Just, nice. just. Staying busy, there's enough to do. Meat and seafood from Butcher Box checks all the boxes. It's versatile, delicious, and they have everything I'm looking for when it comes to quality. Like 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork that is raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood. Right now, Butcher Box is offering new members an incredible deal. Free chicken nuggets for a year and 10% off your first box when you sign up today. That's a 22 ounce bag of gluten-free chicken nuggets in every order for a year when you sign up at butcherbox.com forward slash Luke and use code Luke. Claim this deal at butcherbox.com forward slash Luke and use code Luke. Well, I want to circle back to, to retirement, force, non force. And, you know, we talk about Trevor Brazil uh, being the greatest all time time event cowboy ever. And, uh, I joked with somebody about this saying, you know, he doesn't really have to retire. He just quit going because women and children can team rope. He gets team rope till he's 100, you know, uh, but still that competitive drive, that competitive edge. And I still, in fact, I, I shoot dog a steer the other day and I'd lost 15 pounds from New Year's. So I was, I'm actually probably feeling as good as I have in a couple of years. And and running that steer, and I, I, I picked the best one. I mean, I picked the one that was going to be honest, but it felt like I didn't miss a beat. And when I shouldn't have done that because now I'm like, hey, wait a second. Can I hold together for one more year? You know? Oh, um, gosh. <laughs> yeah. But your event now, when you when you get to that point, it's it's pretty hard to come back. 
Yes, sir. I, I tell you, Luke, the, I, the, I go through the same things, right? So like uh, maybe a cult will buck here at the ranch or something, something that I'll, I'll stick it on one and, and then I'll get off and I'll think, well, I tell you what, I might just go try that American or I might, you know, geez. <laughs> but, but at 53, you know, three, four days later when I can't get out of my recliner. <laughs> Why am I so sore? That, that event, that event is very, very, uh, physically demanding. I remember walking into a coffee shop when I was uh, my little peacock self and I was had all my my, uh, my my banter on my shirt and I was getting coffee and there was an old man in a cowboy hat sitting at the at the table and he said, you a bareback rider? And I said, yes, sir, I am. And he said, you're going to regret that one day. <laughs> and he just kind of scowled at me, you know, and I said, oh, yeah. He said, I used to do it. Someday that's going to catch up to you. He said, and I, I laughed at it, but you know, the truth is, I think about that old man a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? When you're sitting at the coffee shop and this other one goes strutting in. Yeah, 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 that's true. There's no way around it. You're going to get, you're going to get beat up and you're going to have to quit sooner or later. Thank God that the accidents that happened to me, you know, I don't know about the, the 2000 accident where, where I had that horse flip over on me at Cheyenne, that, that, that probably should have ended it, but I was too honest to steal and too lazy to work. <laughs> and I decided to rehab and come back and rodeo, and go to the finals a few more times. When it was time to quit, I really didn't decide to quit. I, I was just lost and it had turned into a job. And, and when it turns into a job, you know, it's, it's not worth doing it anymore. No, exactly. Shane Call told me that at a rodeo, you know, Ty Murray echoed those sentiments to me one day because we were taught we would talk about these things. And when you're not loving it, every every bit of it, then then it's it's time to quit. And I was hurt and I'd, I'd never, you know, like going to the finals for me was always a guarantee. I just I don't know why, but I in my and I and I was always successful in that, that it just happened. Um, the, the, the alternative was not a consideration. And then that year I don't make the finals. I hurt my shoulder. I go get surgery in November. I'm supposed to come back, but I never do. And then I was fine for a year or two, but then it seemed like kind of, there was a point where crud, you don't want to answer phone calls from people because uh, you don't have anything to report. You know, your old buddy that you ain't talked to in three, four months, he just wants to check in, but you feel like he's calling to see how you're doing. You know, I, I can't tell him, yeah, just one Denver, doing good, yeah. you know, things are good. <laughs> and that seems silly to some people, I suppose, but not, a, I think not to a few of us that experienced it. How's that? No, that's exactly right. And like for me, 2016 was the ERA year. We decided not to go to as many, try to, same thing, more, less rodeos, more money, try to get everybody involved. 19, ACL, 20 was COVID. I got to rodeo a little bit. 21 having a great year and I thought this is gonna be it this is gonna be my last year I'm gonna be done you know make the finals win the world go out like you're supposed to blow my hamstring in June and try to rodeo to make the finals and, and just couldn't get it done and that, that kind of to me was like the the point where I'm like I think this this is probably gonna be it but again get my hamstring fixed and thinking maybe there's a chance there's always that thought in the back of a guy's head I think but you just have to come to terms with it yeah, and it's hard for people like you and me to accept failure when we're so used to living on success. Yeah, and that's exactly what it felt like, you know, and I'm sure same way, just I never did achieve my goal where honestly, we, we couldn't ask any more of ourselves with the blood, sweat, and tears, what we gave, what we accomplished. But I think that championship mentality, and I don't know if that's the same thing Tom Brady's feeling or not, but, you know, just, hey, it's, I agree. It has to be close. It has to be close, Luke. And, and you know, and then I was thinking today when I was out feeding cows, I thought, you know, I can't even experience some of, because I have tasted it, I can't even experience what a three-time world champion feels comparative to someone who did it one time. You, you know what I mean? It's, to me, I understand those obtainables. And then I, I, I rodeoed for five more years trying to obtain that goal again and never could get it done. I knew what it tasted like. I knew right. what it was. I knew what it was, but that, so, so in your case, I can only imagine that the feeling of, of just basically invincible, you know, what, what, what do I, I want to do? I can do it. Uh, that, that, and it has to be that way or you don't accomplish those things. 
no, that that's exactly right. And uh, I, I would honestly love to get a round table with you and some other guys that, you know, had that experience like like we had and just and, and talk it out and, and not for us so much, but for the future athletes, you know, these kids have rodeo is not going to last forever, no matter how successful you are. You, you need to figure out that, hey, I'm, I need a I need a second plan after rodeo's over. And Mark, I, I appreciate having you on and talking about it. I enjoy talking about WCRA. I thank Lane for putting the thought in my head and, and having me on. I mean, this is, I, I sure hope people get out of this, our conversation, what I got out of here is my, our conversation. I appreciate you having me on, champ. You bet, man. We'll, we'll catch you uh, down the road somewhere. Yes, sir. See you soon. See you, bud. When Luke called me, I just thought he was going to, like, warm me up. He's going to tell me jokes and things, stopping me up before the <laughs> <laughs>